All right, so on the PMP exam, you're gonna be dropped somewhere in this grid. You're gonna be dropped somewhere. Let's say you're, this is um, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. Integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources. Communications. Risk, procurement, stakeholder. You could be dropped anywhere in this grid. Okay, so if you are dropped here, let's say you are dropped from the description, you assess that you are actually here. Okay, this is integration. So let's say you're dropped in monitor and control project work here. You could be asked, what do you do next if, one, if you get a work performance report? And two, they could say, what do you do next if you get a work performance report and management needs to review that report? In that case, the answer is gonna be, oh, I go this way. I go to manage communications based on the question. You see? But if the yeah. question says, you, you see what I'm saying? Yes, yes. But, good, but if the question says, you are a project manager on a project, you just received work performance reports, management needs to review the reports to decide on a change request. Based on the additional information I've given you, you know that you are talking about a direct input to this now. No, not to that, I'm sorry, to this. Yeah. to perform integrated change control. You see what I'm saying? So yes. you, could, you could either go, you know, talking about vertically or horizontally, you could go, you could move within the knowledge area or you could move within process groups. And to be really honest with you, the answer on the exam, it could be anywhere. It, it could be, now, let me give you another one that has nothing to do with page 25, but at the same time, it does have to do with the inputs and outputs. Your project manager on a project and you're carrying out a final check of, you're carrying out a final check of performance on the project. Where would you get this information from? And if you, you have, basically they're telling you you're in the closing process group, you're doing a final review, where would you get this information from to understand you know, how, how well the project has performed. Well, if you don't have final report as an option and you have work performance report as an option, that would be a more sensible option than let's say you had, just to give you an example, let's say you had project documents, project management plan, and maybe EEFs. And they said, you're, you're closing out a project and you, you need to understand how well, how well the, the team did on the project, where would you get this information? It wouldn't be any of these. Now, these are inputs, right? PD and PMP, you find them as inputs to close project or phase, but that doesn't make them the best option. What makes WPR the best option is because that is where you would find that information best. So if you're given a question on the exam, Mutaz, what I'm saying in essence is, they could throw you anywhere on the grid and ask you, where do you get this information? Or what should you do next? Or what should you have done before? So honestly, the best way to master all the content in my mind for the exam, you gotta know your page 25, you gotta know all of your ITTOs, and I'm talking about page 686 to page 694. Very importantly, you also need to know your page 87 to page 89, where we talk about the project documents and the project management plan components. And then you just have to know as much as you possibly can on everything. You, you gotta know everything because you don't know the angle that the PMI is gonna come from. And then your content outline, 
your exam content outline has to be read and you have to be very familiar with the language. You shouldn't be intimidated by the language. If you can do those in addition to everything else we've been doing, I'm very confident you're gonna do well. Now you do know Bill who was on our meeting with us the past couple of weeks. He's now a PMP, he's passed the exam. And um, the same way I was quite confident about him going into the test, through our session today, I have developed much more confidence that you guys are heading down the right path and you're gonna do what needs to be done. So I'll, I'll say, just do, you know, whatever I've been saying, I think you should read this, I think you should do this, I think you should highlight it. Just go ahead and do all those things. Um, but, but very importantly, on your mock exam, on your mock exam, 70% or greater on your first try of the 2020 mock, the challenge mock, and the marathon mock. And if you do not achieve that, let's say you take the 2020 mock, you didn't get a 70 or greater, do it again a second time or a third time, right? Before moving on to the next mock. Take the next mock, if you get a 70 or greater, awesome. But still take it again so that you can get in the high 80s or the high 90s, high 80s or, or 90s, whichever one, you know, just close up all the gaps. Because if you get 80% on a mock exam, that means you have 40 questions that you got wrong. That's a lot of questions you got wrong and you need to close the gaps in them to do better. Even though it, it has a very high success, you know, possibility, close the gaps. And the marathon mock, same thing. You know, whichever direction you do them, just make sure that before you move to the next mock, you're doing really, really well in whichever mock you're taking. And, and from that, I am very confident you'll do well. So the, the summary of all you were saying, on the exam, you really cannot say whether you're gonna move horizontally or you're gonna move vertically or you're gonna go like that. It could, it could be some very random movement. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for the question. Thank I'll you. stop the recording.